Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're here with Caitlin. Look at that beautiful red hair. Well, today we're going to cut it, and we're going to cut it in a in a way that has been requested by Caitlin. We had a bit of a chat off camera. She said to me that she likes things that are minimalist, and I think that a lot of our clients like things that are minimalist. So, what's min minimalist mean? It's a big word, isn't it? Especially when trying to save fast. I think. It, yeah, for me, it means things that aren't busy. So we don't want a haircut that has lots of layering, lots of shape, lots of texture. We want simplicity. So minimalist for me is something that doesn't have too many elements. So that's what we're going to show you on Caitlin today. Um, are you ready? I'm ready. Do you have any feedback or anything you'd like to say? I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited, excited too. I'm always <laughs> excited. I'm excited every single time I cut hair. So without further ado, let's get started. During the week, Caitlin came in and had some colour done. We did some <laughs> colour sync. So the best product to prepare a hair is then the Colour Last Shampoo and Conditioner. All right, back from the basin. Look at this beautiful hair. Okay, so again, we can break this down into a few steps. Baseline. We are gonna do some shaping in the front, but we're gonna do it very different to previous videos you may have seen. And we're actually not gonna do any layering, we're gonna soften with a little bit of sneaky texture. And then we're gonna finish with, um, gonna put some movement in the hair with a tool that I've only used one or two times, but I'm gonna try and make this as curly as I can. Every person's head shape is different, it's like a fingerprint. And what it's really important is that you section the back of the hair in the right place. So you wouldn't generically just go from top of the head to the ear because you're gonna cut this hair from here in the back and it's not gonna fall there. It's more important actually when you're um, layering hair than doing a baseline. Um, but generally, you put the comb on, you see it starting to round off and a couple of fingers and that's, that's how I find where I need to section the back out. I'm actually just going to um, take a little bit of the moisture out of the back first. So we've pre-dried the ends. It's still damp. It's not wet, but it's still damp. Just want to um, identify any natural movement. It's something I do often if you have an inkling that there might be a little bit of curl or a bit of wave, um, it's always good to remove some of the moisture so you can um, identify any sort of movement that might be problematic when you're creating the shape that you want to create. We all know that hair when it dries shrinks and if it has natural movement in it, it's going to shrink even more. Again, sectioning for me has been determined by how thick the hair is and how much hair I'm gonna take off. So for some people that might, you know, if I was restyling the hair here, I'd absolutely take a smaller section than that. Um, but as you can see, as the hair starts to get towards the end, it starts to lighten out a little bit. We're gonna use the clippers. We're gonna cut it to about there. Slightly forward head position, not too far. Chin down a little bit more, perfect. You can actually see the kink that's forming in there. Proves my point why it's sometimes a really good idea to pre-dry the hair a little.
looking through the hair to my guideline, making sure that I don't cut into it. And I'm trying not to manipulate the hair too much. So in the interest of time, um, I've obviously pre-dried the sides as well. Again, they're still damp, they're not completely dry, um, but just following on for the same reasons as we pre-dried in the back. Um, you might remember in a previous video we did with um, Emma Kate, we cut the, um, the sides here um, because we want it to be square and when it falls into the back to be round. What we're doing on this one is we're actually going to bring all the hair and cut it back on the original baseline. So you should get that, that dip towards the front, which in a minimalist haircut is a really nice element to incorporate just so the baseline's not really standard and bland. It actually just gives it a little bit of something a bit more special. Just holding the hair, not forced, but more holding for control. I want to make sure, let me just spin Caitlin around. You want to cut in triangle, so it's not wrong. You can cut it out here if you want, but for this particular shape, I want it to be a really sudden sharp dip to the front. So you've got to make sure you cut it within the head shape. So you have to make sure we pull this down in here. Yeah, and that it's cut there. Don't worry about being super, super accurate. I mean, always work with accuracy, but once we blow dried this, if there's any sort of variations and a little bit of a you know bump here and there, we'll nick it out at the end. This is a bulk hair removal tool, and it's, we use it in the efficiency of time. So the thing that I love about the result of using a clipper to cut a baseline is the clipper, the way it works is it actually sucks the hair into the clipper and it cuts it off blunt. When you're doing it with a blade, you're always gonna end up with that little bit of a burr on the end because you're pushing away. Even if you're using the reverse technique where you close and you slide it back, it still doesn't look quite the same, which is why I like to do it like this. So now we'll take this. I'm gonna comb all this to the back as well. And one thing, again, we wanna make sure that if we could just pop your head to the side. See this is coming around and down? That's not, that's, that's okay, but we actually need to make it come straight back. Yeah? So it's got to come straight back, not down here. It's got to come back in this way, yeah? Another little Adam tip. So to do that, what I ask my guests to do, or my client, is to just tilt the head to the opposite side so that we can easily comb that back and then you can see now that that's all coming straight back. Try not to manipulate the hair too much. Head up straight, darling. Perfect. And chin down a little bit. Brilliant. Thank you.
if you are going to secure the sides with clips, I want you to be very, very careful and make sure that you know what you're doing because otherwise you'll cut yourself a great big hole and that's never nice. Head nice and straight, gorgeous, and chin down a little bit, perfect. I'm just gonna comb this in here and just gonna nick these little bits off. Yep, yep. Done. Middle part, we're now onto the sides. You can see this is the hair that we were unable to um, cut in the back. That does happen. We've got a really nice guide there. We're not gonna cut into that. I get to just chin up a little bit and just look over your left shoulder. Perfect. So ask your client to turn the head to the side and that'll allow you to get in here and cut this without getting in the way of the shoulder. Um, and again, we can use a clipper if you want. And again, we're working in rectangles. So this needs to all be rectangular. So don't cut that over there, you have to bring it back because by over-directing it, no matter where you do it, whether we're shaping around the face, layering at the back, by over-directing, you retain the length and we do not want to cut those points off. Just gonna rest on your legs, sorry darling. Beautiful. Again, we'll perfect that when the hair's dry. Let's do a 360 or a 180 rather. I'll come around this side. And if you can um, look this way this time, perfect. Just always checking, make sure there's no hair caught behind you. Look at that, you see that? That happens so often. And then when the client gets home, they pull their hair out. You've missed it. Even though it's short, it doesn't reach the baseline. Um, I've even done it myself. Um, chin up a little bit. Thanks, gorgeous. Again, work in a rectangle, bring this back. Natural fall, don't manipulate the hair, just holding it with the comb from here. And we're just nicking those ends off. And just looking at me. Cool. And just this way again. Brilliant. Let's just get that out of the way so we don't cut that. And that's the baseline. Look at the beautiful shape it creates at the front. Unblow dried, obviously. And just section this out, so you even amounts of hair in the front. Yep. Just we're talking about the hair cutting it in a minimal form, and these, that design line's beautiful. So all of a sudden, when Caitlin's wearing a hair on her chest, you can see you've got that beautiful. Um, shape coming in towards the front and all we're going to do in terms of our shaping is just we're going to put a little bit we're going to put a half moon shape in here so that when she wears it off her face um, you have a little bit of shape but we don't want to cut any of these so um, I'm going to show you another way to shape it around the face. For this particular technique we're actually going to do both at the same side at the same time I should say both sides at the same time. I got it right. So, we've spoke about over-directing to retain length and creating that shape. 
This one we're going to do a little bit differently. We're going to cut on a square plane, on a straight plane rather. So again, for me in long hair, the best blade to use is a long one. So I'm again going to use my Edges Premium 7 inch scissor. If you want one, you can grab it on my website, adamcharcher.com. Um, free shipping to the US. Um, it is an amazing scissor. Don't worry if you haven't tried it. Trust me, you'll like it. And if you don't like it, you can send it back and I'll give you a full refund because they are that good. Just like everything Australian, really. Vegemite, get some Vegemite. Okay, so straight plane. So here's what we're gonna do. Both sides of the parting, we're gonna take a square out or a rectangle. Can you just say that last bit again? Okay. So this time we're gonna use two rectangle sections either side of the parting to make a square section. Just chin down a little bit for me, gorgeous. You can see that there, yeah? Head up. Make sure the head's at a neutral position or at natural fall. And we're gonna graduate this. So we're gonna cut this at traditional 45 degrees. So we've had many questions on the channel about this. I'm gonna to explain to you why. For me, this is a 45 degree. This is not layering. Some people say, oh, but it's projection relative to the floor. Well, her head's not on the floor, it's on her shoulders. So that's a right angle. Yes, 90 degrees, 135, 180, zero, 45. 45 degree angle. Straight plane, you can see down here where my points are. Just check to make sure that it's straight, perfect. And it's not, and it needs to be. Now it is, beautiful. We bring the sides up, again projecting it at 45 degrees. This must come up to the same angle. We're not holding it down here, it's coming back to the same angle. If it falls out, don't chase it. 45 degrees, if it falls out, don't chase it. You're just nicking off that little corner. Next section. When we're talking minimalist, basic, simple, people interpret it as being boring and old fashioned and classic. Well, that's up to your own creativity to reinvent something that's minimalist to impress your client. But what happens is every time we learn a new technique or a new haircut or whatever, we forget about the things we used to do all the time. And this takes me back to when I used to um, do a whole long laid haircut just Horizontal sections, graduation or solid form, and that's it. So the back we did horizontal section, the front we're doing horizontal section. Simplicity is beautiful. It's timeless. It's not basic, it's not boring, and it's not ugly. Chin up just to be Caitlin. Perfect, thanks, babe. You hear me talking about it a lot, but again, we're working in rectangles. Always in rectangles. Something you guys might not know about me is I'm actually a bit of a ge geometric freak. Like, I really understand how we can use geometry to create great haircuts. And geometry often is something we've forgotten about, but it underpins a lot of the uh, fundamental cutting principles. So essentially what we're trying to do in the front here is to create another straight line, but by using projection at graduation, we're gonna create softer than solid form. But graduation still builds shape, still has 
shape in it. We're going to keep going until we run out of hair. This will probably be the last section. Your colour is just beautiful. I love the variation in it. It's got that cherry hue through the ends. It's got that copper like, almost like balayage through the front. It's amazing. Who did your colour? <laughs> <laughs> it was me, I swear I did it. <laughs> yes guys, I can colour hair. Maybe I should start doing colours. Again. Could you put your head up? Beautiful. And there's that little half moon, that little moon shape we're talking about. So I have a question for you guys. And the person who answers it right, I'm gonna send you something. So make sure you listen. You need to send your answer to this question to info at adamchacha.com. Why and how were we able to create that soft round curve with a straight line? Send me the answer, I'm gonna send you out a present. So in the interest of time, we've obviously blow dried the hair smooth off camera. Um, this is gonna be a little bit difficult, I'll swing you around here. So what I want you to do is keep your chin like sort of in between your knees because you, when you're in the mirror, you can keep yourself straight. Chin down a little bit, a bit more. So we should start to see a little bit of graduation poking out, a little bit more. Perfect. Can you guys see that? Yes. So see this little bit of graduation under here? We're gonna clean that out on the ends. Stunning. And head really forward. Perfect. Once we've cleaned the back out, that's what I refer to that technique is cleaning out the baseline. We're now going to check the front. Just pop your arms down here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, darling. And if you can look this way, that would be great. Perfect. And you can see again, you've got this little bit of graduation we just need to clean out. Um, and what I would say to you guys, um, please, if you don't know your guest as well as you, I know Caitlin, before you start working around this area here, you need to ask permission because that is really in someone's personal space, right? So um, when you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna hold it in your hands and you're gonna use your scissors, you need to ask permission and explain what you're gonna do because um, we don't wanna end up in any awkward situations and then you blame me and say, well, Adam told me to do it. And then I get in trouble. Look at that line. Perfect, we're just gonna, um, so you're, you're like this, can you just sort of like 
lift your chin up a bit. That's it. Again, we just ask Caitlin to lift her head up just to expose that graduation underneath. Do the other side. That's so cool. See where we can get you the best vantage. I'll go on the other side over there. Let me just uh, slide through here. And we'll do it this way. If you can look into the mirror. Thank you. and look straight to me. Beautiful shape. Okay, so let's um, spin Kaylin around. Beautiful strong ends. Could you look towards me, darling, please? You can see here, we've continued that down nice and smooth. Other way, same again, nice smooth transition. We did that little bit of shaping in the front. So, we've done two lines. We've done a straight line in the front, which someone's gonna um, tell me how cutting a straight line gives you a round shape, and you're gonna get something sent to you. And then um, we've done one line in the back. So what I'm gonna do now, we don't want to do a layered cut, but we're going to go through and do some sneaky um, texturising so that we can have some movement and a little bit of shift. So what we're going to do is take a diagonal back section from behind the ear all the way to the middle of the nape. I'm going to project it above 90 degrees. And we're just going to very, very gently point cut. We're going to cut basically Vs, yeah? above that section. Make sure you project it up so we don't recut the hair we've already cut. end up getting to the middle of the head. Stop there. This goes to the side. Diagonal back section again. This time we're working through the middle. Using my Edges Premium Scissor again. Seven inch blade. Beautiful. Be 
this can sometimes be awkward. <laughs> so I tend to go from this side. Again, if you're leaning on your client, you're leaning across them, please ask for permission. Great. I'll leave the back out for a little bit. I'm going to work through this front area. Diagonal back section. Point of the head to the temple. This is where you need to be accurate. This is where I take multiple sections because the last thing you want to do is to cut across and then you ruin your shape. I want to make sure we don't cut across our design line. Horizontal section. This comes out this way because it's a part of the baseline. You can just see it's starting to flow a little bit nicer. See that there. Again, now we're going to go horizontally. That's to address this area here. So you get that beautiful, beautiful spliciness in the ends. A little bit more here. This is very much visual. So you need to look, make sure you're happy with the flow. You can see all of a sudden, have not compromised the shape. You still got that point coming in the front, those points we spoke about in the back, but it flows a little bit better. Now we're going to do the same here. So I'm not really worried about the ends because we lightened them already. This is more about the top. So I've got my one section there. My other section here. And here we're going to include this as well. Excuse me for walking in front. Doing the same on this side. And just for a second, we're gonna clip this out of the way. And I just want you guys, if you do this, to just make sure you're happy with the... Now, I don't want this to be, and look, I don't want it to be too textured for Caitlin, but you guys can push this as hard as I like. And I often say in my videos, I can only show you the techniques to build shape. When it comes to texturizing and personalizing, that comes from here. That comes from the heart, and that's something that you guys need to, to do and put your own stamp on, a basic or elaborate shape that you've created. 
Now we're going to take this whole section. Don't get it all mixed up. And we're not going to cut a design line at all. We're going to keep this I'm going to actually just sink this chair down just as far as it goes because it has a lot longer than I anticipated. I want you guys to have a look from over my shoulder. So it's really important that you grab all this at once. And all we're going to do, you can see me actually channeling quite deep. Can you see that? Then drop it. Not touching this design line, it's so important. Otherwise you're gonna put chatter marks and it's gonna look quite choppy. Bring it forward there just so you can get to that, that back area and then let it go. What does this do? Well, if Caitlin wants to look like she has a one length haircut with no layering, it does. But she blow dried her hair with a bit of volume and body all of a sudden she's got separation, so you create lightness through there. Yeah. Then we just tie the sides in. We do a, take a guide from there, take a guide from here. Again, it's like a rectangle, but instead of being straight, it's on the side and this way. I always work in rectangles. You guys must be here, sick of hearing me say that. Here we are again, making sure that we're just cutting almost like a V or a channel in the hair. Last but not least, repeat. In our minimalist haircut, you're probably starting to think, well, it might in theory, look like it's quite easy to do and quite minimalist, but in reality, it takes a lot of skill to perform. Head forward, gorgeous. Just close your eyes, I'm gonna give you a bit of a shake. Mm. Grab the dry out. Blast that hair off, yeah. and head back. All the way back. Let's have a look how much movement we got in there now. Yeah, wow. See how everything, everything comes down this way into that shape. You can see I've released that. In the beginning of the video I spoke to about the variation in colour had that cherry hue underneath. You can now see the dark coming in and that, that almost copper balayage coming over the top. You have a beautiful looseness in the front. We were going to curl it, but I don't think we are because we said minimalist. So I'm going to leave this straight because you absolutely can. Because all you really need to do, open the face up, texture builder. Head back, eyes closed. Texture builder gives us grip and pliability without hold, so we can do this. And I'm not watching, I'm looking at the camera, so head up. Let's see how we go with this. Pull this forward and with the texture builder, we're just gonna mold some shape in there. Hmm. Eyes closed. So 
So we saw it smooth, and now you get to see that, that edginess. I love the texture. Texture's amazing. Well, minimalist is versatile. What do you think? You like it? I it. I absolutely love it. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Not too short? No, it's perfect. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a really good length. So let's recap. Because this was the minimalist haircut, and it's one of my favourite. And I would say that I know for a fact, actually may as well mention, I am going to be in LA in January at ISSE. Um, if you guys are at the International Salon Spa and Expo, Jimmy and I will both be there. And uh, it would be really great if you came up and say, hey, I watch your channel and maybe have a chat and um, it'd be nice to me back to the haircut. We said this is going to be minimalist. It's my favourite one. And I'll tell you why it's my favourite, because it's versatile. Because we spent time just creating that shape so you get these points in the back. You're going to be dizzy by the time I've done this. <laughs> you create these points here. But in the back, we have, if you can put your head back for me, you can see that this, it all flows into a point in the back, yeah? Nice, strong on the ends, but you can see now all that texture. It looks layered, but it's not. Because this is what happens when we brush the texture builder out. It's beautiful. It gives us volume, and it gives the client the ability to create their own shape with an iron, with a brush, with product. So it's versatile. So minimalist is good because it's versatile, it's beautiful, it's now, it's relevant, it's edgy and you need to be doing this haircut on all your clients because most of my clients have haircuts like this. I think it's great. Let's um, take this cape off. Let's pull the string here. Let me give you a little blast. You can just slide your arms out. You don't have to stand up. Get your hands in it. Get your hands in it. Touch it, it's your hair. Get your hands in it. Show us, tell us if you like it. Do you feel the texture builder in there? Yeah. Well, let's, it's actually really nice. I want you to look here and like this is the camera. Yeah. I love it, it's really great. Look amazing. And the colour I did is pretty hot too, <laughs> I have to say. Actually, I can't take all the credit. Um, a really talented young person by the name of Rachel that works at Axis. Um, did the majority of it. I just freshened it up yesterday for today. Here's our minimalist haircut. Caitlin, thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Um, as always, make sure you subscribe. Please share with your friends. And uh, as I said, Jimmy and I will be in LA for the ISSC 2018 in Long Beach. And it'll be awesome if you guys could come up and say good day. We're going to take some footage and we're going to post it back on YouTube. Don't forget about the question. The question, if I recap, was how did a straight line create a round shape? Um, send your answers to info at adamcharcher.com and the first email I open with the right answer gets a little gift from me. Caitlin, thank you. Thank you so much. And until next time, keep cutting.